are now less than a month away. The October 7th vice presidential debate between Republican Vice President Mike Pence and Democratic U.S. Senator Kamala Harris will go ahead despite President Donald Trump testing positive for coronavirus. Pence remains a COVID-19 negative and for now both parties are preparing for the face-off in Salt Lake City in Utah. So how will the debate between the two running mates impact the election? Let's find out in this next report by Voice of America. It is considered the political undercard, the vice presidential debate. I think vice presidential debates often are more interesting to watch. The stakes are lower. The participants feel a little freer to say and do what they want. Wednesday's debate between Republican Vice President Mike Pence and Democratic Senator Kamala Harris has multiple storylines that make it more interesting and watchable. The historic nature of Kamala Harris's uh, uh, nomination and the fact that a woman of color, first woman of color on a major party ticket, will be debating. Geraldine Ferrara was the first woman to participate in a vice presidential debate, facing George Herbert Walker Bush, Ronald Reagan's running mate, in 1984. So I remember um, uh, there being tremendous concern about the way Vice President Bush should debate the first female on a presidential ticket. Um, and he could be, at times, a very competitive man and uh, certainly was a very good debater, knew his material very well, uh, but didn't want to look as though he was bullying her in any way. In 2008, voters were eager to see Sarah Palin debate Joe Biden. The expectations for that Biden-Palin vice presidential debate were so great it's the only time in presidential debate history that the vice presidential debate outdrew, had more viewers than the top of the ticket presidential debates. And those top of the ticket debates were not snoozers because they included uh, 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 Barack Obama uh, in terms of historic uh, uh, debates. Now, President Trump's COVID diagnosis is increasing already high expectations for the Pence-Harris debate. Vice President Pence was the head of the coronavirus task force. Uh, originally, Trump seemed to sort of take it over from him, uh, but certainly uh, the Harris campaign will be going right for Pence on coronavirus concerns and uh, talk about all the things that they think he did to not handle this as well as he could have. Mary-Kate Carey is a senior fellow at the University of Virginia's Miller Center. She's got a reputation for uh, being a very aggressive questioner in the Senate Judiciary Committee. She's known for sort of laying these traps and trying to bait people to uh, respond. So she will be a very formidable debater, I think. Pence, on the other hand, is a pretty unflappable guy uh, to the point of sometimes not being very animated at all. The chances of him falling into any sort of trap are pretty small. Um, but I also think he's got um, he's got an audience of one. His illness aside, President Trump is age 74. Joe Biden is 77. This vice presidential debate has future implications. If Mike Pence has another good debate in 2020, as he did four years ago, then that really helps strengthen his position as the Republican nominee in 2024. And the same with Kamala Harris, who's obviously you know young enough to have a long-term ambition here. But too much focus on four years from now risks losing sight of the main debate objective, defend the presidential candidate they are running with. I think that we'll see... Uh, again, uh, uh, Kamala Harris prosecuting why the, the Trump should not be returned to office and then Pence having to defend the record for the past four years. Uh, and so that that will be, um, I think, an interesting debate to watch. The vice presidential candidates meet Wednesday evening in Salt Lake City, Utah. Steve Reddish, VOA News, Washington. Co-presented by Skoda. Simply clever.